All right, guys, welcome back. In the last video, we showed how to set up a basic uh, field collection. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to uh, actually use that field collection to display a scoreboard. So uh, we have our package options. Uh, like I said in the first video, the CSS, JavaScript uh, down here are going to be global for all pages in your uh, collection. So this is specifically a versus screen. Uh, when I stream, let's look at uh, my other package here. I also have a collection for uh, caster names and basic lower thirds. So there's a while well, I'll have different pages depending on what's going to be on screen. But we're just going to talk about the versus screen here. So let's continue with this. Uh, what we have here is the browser source. And if we go to the browser source link, uh, this is, it's going to be empty because we haven't programmed anything in it yet. And as we can see, it is a blank white page. There's nothing here. Uh, so we're, let's edit that. And let's, uh, let me actually move that to its own screen so that we can uh, show it. All right, there we go. This gives us a bit more room. Okay, and so, like I said, CSS, JS for the package are going to be global. CSS, HTML, JS for the page are going to apply to this page only. So let's, uh, let's get started. Uh, with the package, we had the option to set four basic colors. So in the uh, package style sheet, I'm going to actually make some identifiers for that. So we can actually just cut and paste this information right here. All right, so let's uh, let's hold on. I've got code on another screen where I prepared this, and let's add a class called color b background, and then that's the border color that, and that's the border color that is defined here. There's also color one, color two, and color three. And we can do those right now as well. This, I mean, doing this section does require a bit of knowledge of code. But if you would like to have um, some stylized scoreboards, uh, you're going to have to know how to code because that's how you're going to add some personality to your scoreboards. And there we go. Now we have our three main uh, classes for all the colors. And the reason you want to do this is because if you change the color in your package, you would like the colors in your package to uh, propagate to all the pages in your package. So I've just made it so that any class that has these, I'm sorry, any divs or elements in your page that have these classes on it will receive this background color. Uh, let's, let's add a bit more to this. Let's, this is basic uh, HTML stuff. Uh, if you don't know HTML, there's the internet. You can look for it. Uh, so let's make all text on the page white. Uh, let's make it font family Tahoma. Uh, let's add a shadow to all the text because it's white. If you add a small shadow to it, it'll be easier to see. Uh, black, black shadow. There we go. And uh, then let's add some font size classes. You know, what? let's not do that. Let's just make a generic font size in the body. And let's say font size is uh, 24. There we go. And like I said, this is a style sheet, which is universal to uh, your entire package. All right, so now let's make the actual page itself. And the first place you're really going to want to start is HTML. So what, what do we have here? We have, uh, let's start with the uh, player area. So we have players one and pl their scores. So let's add a div for div class equals, uh, you know, let's use color one for that. And that's going to be, 
and that's going to be players p1 because it's player one information and let's give this an id as well and let's make this id equivalent to the uh is something wrong here why why is this colored so weird what's going on i don't know it seems right to me uh so we have players one players two let's just make that equivalent it'll just make it easier to see what's going on all right and then let's uh, put uh let's see one that's just placeholder text and then let's do the same thing for uh, player two and then click you know what? let's also put in the scores while we're at it since we're right here and let's call this scores s1 and that's going to be player one s and then player two s scores s2 and then let's click save now if we go to the actual page and refresh it you're going to see it says one 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 it should actually say zero 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 all right and now we have that information right on the page each in their own division now there is no style on this yet it's just straight blank divisions and that's because we haven't added any style to it and we're going to do that right next by clicking on the CSS or cascading style sheets button and uh, let's do something here we're gonna do players now if we go back let's just do it here we can see what it is I made each player's player uh, share a class name with players. So let's do players. Uh, let's see, make it position absolute. Uh, put it right at the top. Give it a width of 600 pixels, a height of 40 pixels, line height to match it. Line height matching the actual height will make it so that any text put in this field will be vertically centered in that field. Uh, and then let's uh, horizontally center the text as well with text align center. All right. Then we are going to, uh, let's see, we have players dot, whoops, what, what did I just do? Dot P1. That means this will only affect the player one because it also shares the class of p1 and then let's put this on from the left side of the screen 300 pixels off and then let's put players p2 300 pixels off of the right side of the screen and then when we click save and now we're going to refresh here and that's what we see what what did i I did something wrong here. What's what's going on? Oh, I, I guess it's right. Whoops, wrong link. All right. So why are these stretched out? Oh, you know what? Let's uh. Scores. Let's give the scores a different color. Let's give them color two. All right. Now, now it's easier to see. Okay. So we can see the player one. And player two, I, I can't type, whatever, I'll just twip player one and player two uh, right here. Let's give it a bit more style because who wants a scoreboard that looks like that? So I'm going to add a clip path, uh, a polygon shape. And what polygon will do is it will cut out a shape from... Uh, these divisions. So let's say uh, uh, t -t 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 -uh, what am I doing here? 95%, 100%, and then from 5%, 100%. Um, if you don't know exactly what I'm doing here, what you can do is you can go to Google and type, uh, let's see, CSS Polygon Tool or Generator. And then pick any of the polygon generators, and they will tell you what you can do to generate polygons and get specific shapes. Very easy to use. You don't have to uh, do it right off your head like I did here. All right, so let's do that. 
And let's refresh it again. And now we can see that there is some nice curves here. Well, not curves, slants here. Uh, let's now add some CSS for the scores. So let's go, uh, let's do scores pretty much exactly the same. So I'm going to copy it, change some of the uh, class constructor names. I'm going to move the scores off 230 pixels from each side. I'm going to make them only 100 width inside. And I'm going to change some of the polygon angles just so things look nicer. And then let's save that. And now refresh again. And that does not look right. What did I miss? Ah, you know what? It's not scores P1. It scores S1. Because if we go back to our page, I gave scores S1 instead of P1. There we go. And I didn't click save yet. There we go. Now we save. And now we can see that the scores are all aligned. But this is not in the right order. So let's put that in the right order so that the green goes behind the red. And there we go. And uh, showing again why we use these uh, color paths is because this will allow me to change that to orange. Click update. Click save. And then when we refresh, the green will have turned to orange. Very convenient to change the colors throughout your package this way. Okay, so now we have uh, the basic layout, but it's not populating any data. It should say Manticore versus Jaxel, score 1 to 2, or 3 to 2, etc. But it's not showing anything. That is because of the JavaScript over here. You actually have to use JavaScript to make sure it implements all the information. Now, by default, uh, anything in the page options, uh, the page JavaScript will get executed anytime there's an update to uh, the panel information. It actually says right down here, the JavaScript on this page will be executed each time fields are updated. Data from field collections can be accessed from the variable array doc data. And that means uh, we have an array of data. Every time the panel gets updated, uh, this array of data will be shot to the to this page over here, and it'll all be in this array doc data. So what we're going to do is um, let's see, because if you remember back here, we gave everything an ID, a matching ID to the uh, their field name, and this uses a language called. Uh, jQuery on JavaScript. So we can use some jQuery identifiers and IDs are uh, denoted by the hash symbol or the pound symbol, uh, depending on what generation you grew up in. So I'm going to take the ID of players one and I'm going to say make the text in players one equal the contents of doc data players one. Very easy. And I'm going to do the same thing with players two. And then I'm also going to do with players one score and players two score. Click save. And then we refresh. It didn't execute. Hold on, let's uh, inspect the source and see if I have any sort of errors here. Fire exec is not defined. Failed to load resource server responded with. Ah, I see what I did. You know what? I, I know what it is. There we go. Okay. I will have that fixed before release, but. I, I just fixed it. <laughs> okay, I will have that fixed before actual release so you guys should never see that error. All right, so here we have Manticore versus Jaxel, three to two. If we click the swap button and then update, you'll see that the names got updated automatically, very quickly. We can update the scores. It's now Jaxel uh, five to three. I also click swap by accident and let's reset the scores. And now it's zero, zero. It all happens very quickly and on the fly right across the internet. And there's not really much more you need to do. You just add 
uh, where it's putting the data and where it's getting the data. Now, it's this is very simple, but what if you want it to look nicer? What if we want to add some animations to this? This is where it actually gets complicated. And uh, here's what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do in my global CSS is add some animation classes. I'm going to add animation class for slow speed and fast speed. And the reason I'm doing this is when I'm uh, withdrawing these panels, I want it to withdraw quickly. But when they're sliding in, I want them to come in uh, slow. So I'm going to have two different speed types. Let's do all. And the slow animation is going to be half a second long. Ease out. And the fast animation is going to be only a quarter of a second long. Ease in. Like I said, I've been programming on the web a long time. So this is just stuff I know and acquired throughout the years. And I'm trying to get through it. Uh, without trying to overcomplicate it too much. So I'm going to keep this as simple as I really can for this. All right, and we're going to save that. And now we have those animation classes uh, set up. Um, now for the global JavaScript, I'm going to add some easy functions here that will... Uh, you know what? Before I do that, let's add some... All right. Now what we want to do is when uh, we're animating these fields, we want to add a field to them called hidden. And because I want them to hide the panels up here uh, whenever we want to update information. So we'll need to add the class hidden. And what we're going to do is say hidden. And with anything that's hidden, we're going to put the top position instead of being zero, we're going to push it as negative 40, which will actually make it hide off the top of the screen where you can't see it. And we're going to make sure that's uh, important so it never overrides that. Top 40 pixels. There we go. All right, now let's get into the JavaScript because I was about to do some JavaScript stuff, but if I didn't explain what hidden did, it would be uh, a little less, it would make less, less sense. Okay, so let's add a function. Now functions in JavaScript are things you can call multiple times from other locations. Uh, okay, we're going to call L element hide on a specific element. And that's going to return another function called next or with a next variable. Um, this is just basic chaining in jQuery. So if you don't uh, really understand jQuery, just remember that all this stuff is kind of required uh, to chain promises in jQuery. So uh, when we want to hide a class, what we're going to do is add the class hidden. Very simple. Uh, then after the chain is done, we're going to tell it to move on to the next animation in the chain because we are going to be chaining uh, multiple actions in this. I am actually going to add one more thing instead, as well as hidden, I'm going to add fast because when I am hiding things, I want them to go quickly. Uh, now let's add another function called LM show uh, on that element and return function. It's going to be very similar next, but what this one is going to do is on that element, it's going to remove class fast and hidden. And then I'm going to add another function. This function here is not required, uh, but it's going to relieve a lot of uh, pain in reiterating code over time. And this is going to be an empty function with no variables uh, sent into it. And all this function is going to do, it is part of the chain, so we still have to do all this next stuff. Speaking of that, I forgot to put next there. If you don't put next, it won't call the next animation in the chain. So that is required. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple for loop. Now, as I stated before, uh, whenever you update a page, it'll send an array called doc data uh, to that page. So what I want to do is loop through that array. So I'm going to say for each uh, property in doc data. I don't know why I did it that way. All right. For each property in doc data, let's... Uh, update a class with the name of that uh, property. Prop is the name of the property, not the actual value in it. So this would, let's say for uh, players one, it would say I'm searching for an element with the ID of players one here. Uh, let's update that text with doc data and then the array key. Like I said, this is not required, but if we go back to our page JavaScript, basically we can replace all of this with just a call to that function. So I could do LM update and that would take care of everything. In fact, we can actually try that right now and it didn't execute it. I probably have an error in my code somewhere. How do I inspect? There we go. And it says no error in the code. So I did something wrong there. Um, you know what it is? It's because I didn't put in an animation chain. I have this set up for an animation chain, uh, which that's not it. All right. All right. So, but we do want to set up these animation chains. So let's say if... Um, We've got our if uh, versus, this is a class name. So class name, start with hashtag versus one text is not equal to the new data that just came in doc data of versus, versus one. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Or let's copy this again. And let's put that on a separate line just so it's easier to read. Or versus two is different. Then we're going to run a function. And if that function runs, we're going to do a animation chain on body. And we're going to queue in some animations. Like I said, this is a jQuery animation queuing. You can just go to Google and type in jQuery uh, queue and read up on it if you want to learn more. Um, it's a bit more complicated, but I already showed you how to do it simpler. So we're going to show some more complicated stuff. And in that queue, I'm going to call the function lm hide. Uh, you know, let's do this on the scores first. The scores are, are simpler. All right, so LM hide. So let's hide all the scores. And those start with periods because they are class names. Hashtags are uh, IDs. Uh, periods are classes. So we're going to hide the uh, all these score elements. We're going to put a one second delay, 100 milliseconds. Then we're going to do the next piece of the chain, which would be, let's queue up another function, lm update. And that's going to uh, update all the information in the fields. Then we're going to wait another second and then add another item to the queue, lm show. And now we're going to show the scores. And that would be the end of that function. And now we refresh that and you can see what happened. Oh, that animation did not appear correctly. Oh, I know why. Because I need to put a default animation speed on the HTML. Because if you do not have a transition speed, it's going to take it as not a transition. Uh, and the transitions we defined here, slow and fast. 
So we make the transition speed default slow and it left quickly and then showed up. So let's uh, update the score there. And now the scores went up and now they come down. Now we want to do this for more than just uh, uh, the scores. We also want to do this for for the player names. So let's uh, add some more chains. In fact, we can copy this and put it right here and make some select changes. And we're going to hide the scores. And after hiding the scores, we're going to hide the players. And then we're going to update the scores. And then we're going to show the players and then show the scores. And we don't want both these functions running at the same time. So we're going to make that an else if. And now we click save. And then run that. And as you can see, it does the whole animation change on update. Now, I showed before how we need to have a default uh, chain speed. You're probably going to also want the scoreboard to be default hidden because you don't want the scoreboard to show up with that dummy information with my typo of one and TWP. So now if we refresh this page, you notice it's going to start blank. It's going to fetch the information and then it's going to fill in the information as it receives it. And let's do an update. And everything comes in all nicely and smoothly. Uh, now, you can actually make this a bit more complicated if you wanted to. And in my panels, I actually do just that. So let's go to my versus screen and let's go to this page. And this page is not going not only going to have a top bar, it's also going to have, have a bottom bar, which appears at the bottom of the screen. So let's go to there and we can see some animations there. And of course, my code is far more complicated. You can look at my global CSS and it is significantly long. Then you can look at my page CSS and it is a lot shorter, but still pretty long. And then my global JavaScript with the three functions I just showed you, as well as some additional functions on the top, which I won't get into and the individual page JavaScripts with all the animations. As you can see, I chain a lot more animations here. So if we actually watch this in real time, uh, we can, best way to do that is to change the round number. So let's say winners finals, and then click save. And then you can see everything it just did. First it uh, pulled in the numbers, pulled in the names, pulled in the name panels, and then slid up and then did the whole thing back in reverse. So yeah, pulled in the scores. Well, first it faded out the uh, scores, then pulled in the scores, then faded out the names, then pulled in the names, then slid up the top row, then updated everything, uh, slid down the top row, slid out the name panels, then showed the names, then slid out the score panels, and then uh, showed the scores. So pretty complicated. And be, to facil facilitate it, my HTML is also extremely complicated. So you can actually do a lot with this because you have direct access to your style sheets, your HTML, and the JavaScript. You can. This is extremely powerful. Anything you can do in in these languages, you can put right on the page. And I've made it all available to you guys. And uh, you can just. Take the browser source URL and put it right into OBS or XSplit, whatever you use, and there's your panel right there. And, of course, you can make more pages. I have my casters page. So this one is a bit more complicated. So let's uh, – or a little bit bigger. So let's uh, show that page. And that's going to uh, – there we go. Yeah, Nice. And uh, that's another example of what you can do. And then I have my players page, which is a simple lower third about the stream. And it's going to slide out. And this goes right into your stream overlay. Anyways, peace out, guys. Uh, if you have any questions or requests, just let me know.
Adiós.